Good morning. Grain's all dry, that's a seed pile. They're coming to test it. They'll be in tomorrow to get a sample of it. Emptying out the old Bowser. I won't take it right to the bottom because it'll be full of gunge. Then away and pick up some wood chips. Just had some sheets and gutters delivered as well because that building there is getting re-roofed. So it's not awful, the roof. It's not bad, like you wouldn't replace it normally, but we're putting solar panels up on that roof. It's a case of, if we do it now and then put the solar panels up, then we know it's good. Right, we're here for some of that stuff, but not in that form. Job done, loaded up. I've got 5.78 ton on there. This is wet wood chip. Normally we've got dry wood chip, which the trailer usually takes just shy of five tons. So in a five ton batch, if it's dry, if this is wet, you lose 700 kilo. 14% of your weight loss if you dry it down to 22% moisture, basically. back at it. Anyway, these wood chips, they're for the sunflowers, that's why they're all wet wood chips. Duncan Kev, I've been shifting a fair amount of bales there. Oi, I don't want to spill any of this wood chip. Anyway, it's going in here. Saying that, it's quite grassy. I don't know if we need it. Ah, uh, just gonna have to rake all that out. Can't wait. Right, that'll do. Still needs raked out a bit into the corners, a bit over there as well. Refreshing this bit, there is old wood chips down there. This is from when the tulips were open, they were over there. There was a wee path out to them with wood chips, but obviously they go all silver and mucky as well. So I'm renewing all this because the sunflower traffic will come through here as well on the way out in that direction. This dog is insane. A few square meters and I'm sweating. Anyway, hey Doug, just got that wee bit there. The rest is all done. Duncan Kev been shifting bales here and at a different yard, just started shifting bales into the shed. So this whole bay will fill right up. It's quite a good tall shed this. Get a lot of bales in. Getting the bows are filled up. I've got the diesel done. My dad did it actually. Add blues just about there. Happy days. Get this along the road to yard two so we can get the combine filled up. It's desperate for add blue. Add blue tank on the combine generally, three diesel tanks do one add blue. So we managed to survive with just diesel and not fill it with any add blue for a while. So we'll get it topped up. I think that's 200 litres. Tank's 650. We had a delivery of fuel today, so we just got them to fill it straight into that. Good morning, we have a man coming to drill a borehole today. Fingers crossed. This morning routine is getting boring. Check my creep feeder. Just a little bit in there. What a corker of a morning. It's been mixed weather recently. There's not been much glorious sunshine. It's been pretty cloudy, but to be fair, we've been really quite fortunate compared to the rest of the country. A lot of England has been soaking. North of us has been soaking. Ireland's been soaking. Central Scotland, where we are, we've kind of just dodged showers all the time and been pretty lucky. Kev's just rocked up. He's going to whack the flatbed on here. I'm going to shift bales with Dunk. So this shed's going to fill up. Steady does it. On the button, first time, no mess. These have been delivered, so any guesses what that is? There's two of them. 
identical. Let me know down below. Anyway, also these benches, had them made up. There's eight of them. These are all for the sunflowers. That way we could. They've all been done with marine ply, so it's got like a, don't know whether it's been soaked or it's been treated before it's been made or manufactured, but it's meant to last a lot better in the weather. Marine ply rather than just standard ply. Right, back at yard two. Brought some full IBCs because the guys who are boreholing today, they need some water. Duncan Kev are still shifting bales. They'll be at that all day. That shed should fill right up to the front here. These bales are quite fluffy. They're a bit bigger than normal, so you can get six on them. You usually get six on the trailer of our, of our normal bales. These were used by a different baler, so they're a bit bigger, they're soft centered. Bales, bales, bales. It's a bit tight up there. But it fits. Anyway, borehole we think we're going to put out in this field. I'll show you where. So when the shed is complete, basically the yard's going to come out into this field a wee bit. The, these telegraph lines are coming down. We don't know exactly how far we need to come. We might be not far off this tram line here where we come to. And basically, the shed sits there. That's the existing shed that is staying. So this is going to be an awkward corner if we leave it as field to get in it with a sprayer and uh, you'll end up just cutting a straight line up here and that'll be a grassy patch. So we might put a borehole right here, somewhere in here. Here we go, we have a machine that's gonna bore us a hole and hopefully find us a load of water. Right, Kev's just taking this trailer off because um, there's a trailer behind the shed up there that needs moved. Anyway, the drilling rig's just about to get unloaded. David Beat, my uncles have both used them there, Tati Farmers and Fife. They've got irrigation holes that have been drilled by Davey here. He's got four rigs and he's kind of based out of Sweden actually. Some piece of kit. Anyway, once it gets going, hopefully we'll find we're not needing irrigation volumes, just enough to feed the cows. So we're looking for about 12,000 litres a day. That's what we're aiming for. Borehole location right there. Go. We've gone for there because. The new shed's going down there, it's out the road, it's never going to be in the way there. And then we can just run a pipe um, down through the field and back into the new shed. If the quality's like it and we've got the water volume, we'll, we will put all the houses probably onto it as well. Some racket it makes, but they're drilling a pilot hole just now and then they'll change to a, a rock drill bit and then they'll do the rest. We're going to be here for two days. Right, so step one here, they're drilling a pilot hole and they're sleeving it with these steel sleeves. They get hammered down at the same time as the drill bit's rotating and they sleeve all the way down till they're right into bedrock. And then basically after they get to bedrock, from there on, they don't need a sleeve because the rock acts as a sleeve and it won't collapse on itself. Whereas when you're up above bedrock, you're working with soil and silts and subsoil, topsoil, and they are not obviously rock. They're not solid, so they can collapse on themselves. So they keep adding drill bits, they've sleeved it to about somewhere between 15 and 20 metres, I think they sleeved in the end. We're into rock now. Oh, you're in. That, that is some that, kind of sandstone like, but it's just a bit soft and withered. Right, they sunk the first piece of pipe in, they've put another one on the top here, connect it all up, pack that in as they drill. The drill core is right through the middle down there, and then once they're well into bedrock, they then they leave these sleeves in and they change the drill bit. And he's welding that seam to join the two pieces together and that'll get rattled right the way down. There we go, so I want a lot better than my welding. And they think they'll probably need three or four of these sleeves. Then pull out the drill bit, change it for a rock drill bit. They then start drilling that, which will go right the way down to 50, 60 meters, just depending on what happens on the way down, whether they feel like they're gonna get enough water where they are. They then pull all that back out, then they sleeve it with a plastic sleeve, which they can just slide in by hand, so it's oversized. I think they said the drill bit's 140 mil and the plastic sleeve 110 mil, I think. Something like that. Anyway, plastic sleeve all the way down, they screw together a three meter lens, sleeve it all, pump down the bottom, jobs are good. I've made it sound really quick and simple.
fingers crossed this is our only drill hole and we've hit water and it yields good. They've got a 99% success rate of getting something viable out of it. We're not needing masses of volume, 12,000 litres a day for the cattle and maybe the houses and whatnot is plenty. Whereas like irrigation, you need a lot more. So hopefully one hole will do us, it won't be too expensive. The one hole, we'll get enough water, it's a no brainer, happy days. Anyway, leave them to it for a wee while. Got some feed here. We're trying to catch three Highland cows. We've managed to get one of them and shift it along here to yard one. We've got a wee field in the village. And there's two more left to come, but they are proving a wee bit difficult. Basically, there's one that gets bullied as well, so it doesn't go near two of them. Anyway, let's go and see what we can manage. There they are up there. Come on, pal. Let's grub there, let's grub there. Come on. Come on. I'm not interested. Oh, one's thinking about it. Come on. Just need to get her in here. Come on. In you go. She knows exactly what I'm up to. We got Don't know if you saw any of that, but we got her. Run and get a trailer before she starts going daft. Steady, steady. Whoa, oh, nailed it. Trailer on. I'll need to get dad, because I need someone to open the gates while I reverse that. Gate lady's been made redundant. She's getting a wee bit angsty. Still got one to go. Two down, one still to go, but we'll try her tomorrow morning. These Highlanders are in calf, so we're getting them closer to the farm for keeping an eye on them. Well, we didn't get them scanned, but in theory they're in calf. Hey beast. That's who we caught yesterday. On you go, no, not that way. Shh, 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 shh. On you go, there oh, you go, there you go. Shh. There you go, pal. There you go, wee. Where's my stick gone? There we go. Just run them round there into the field. Come on in. Shh, shh, shh. On you go, on you go. Off you go, come on. Come on, girl. Laurie coming for wheat in about 10 minutes, so. Dad's fetched me some passports. There's my lorry for wheat. Big French lorry was coming to go there, but no chance. All right, the guys have stripped this section here. They're uh, just because the weather's about just now, they're not stripping at all. They're gonna start putting sheets on again from here and just work away at it gradually. The other pitch down that side's to be done as well. Thankfully, it's the top of the back of the shop in here, so they're not really working at any height because they've got that to stand on. Um, so I'll do a wee snap the finger and this will have new sheets on it. Back the buck on, load a load of beets, send him on his way, happy days. There's a trailer in the way. Have I got a key on me? I do. Thankfully there's a tractor in front of it as well. It's not going to be a high scorer on a lorry leaderboard anyway. He'd get good points for no fast. One French lorry. Right, that's out the road. Just got a message from the borehole guys saying, you better come along. We're done. We've only been going for three, four hours. We'll be here to, meant to be here for two days. 
I'm a bit confused. Obviously got a pump and all that to put in, but they seem to be... All I got was a text. You better come, we're done. They're just cleaning it at the moment, but that's finished drilling. You're down it. What, 70 meters? 70 meters. We've got six cubic hour, which is 100 liters a minute. Happy days. That's just water from the IBC tanks there. And there'll be some, there'll be some from down below in that, will there? 90% of this from down below. Right, the borehole is down. They're just cleaning it all out now, pumping water and air down. And then whatever's coming up in terms of silt and sandy stuff and rock and whatever, they're flushing it out to clean it all. Didn't take long at all. Didn't come across any hiccups, which is great news. There's plenty water. We need to get it tested as well. Dave thinks we might be approaching on like, because we're not miles away from Highland Spring, we're nine miles by the road. So as the bird flies, maybe like six. So we might be up on the similar kind of mineral water area. So it might be good water. So we'll maybe get it tested and have a look into that. Maybe it worth a wee look. Right, that's um, totally done with the machine. They're only here, they're only, they started drilling at 10 past 12 and it's now 10 past three. Three hours, job done. So we might actually look into borehole for the farm shop obviously there's more testing involved for human consumption than all that but this has been a success you can see the water coming flying out there wait for it he's estimated at six six cube an hour and he thinks it's probably a bit above that anyway could up could be up to nine the stage we're at now is basically they're going to pack up all their kit disappear we need to dig a wee hole in there for access so they can come back and line it all and um, put the fittings on put the pipes in and we need to get our Sparky to do the pump. The pump will get sunk right down in there, down to 70 meters. I'll show you a drill bit actually. So there's, this is the drill bit they use. Oh, you're a bandit, weighs a ton. For locking in, see up there? This is a pilot. That's what it's prepared. Putting on here, it's flipping heavy. What? How it's got this shape. Uh huh. So we just lock into there, and when we're finished putting the steel down, we quarter turn back the way. And cool then it out. out. Okay, so that drill bit I just had slots into here, yeah. and that cores for your outside sleeve before you get to bedrock. There you go, David B. Get your borehills done. Big spanners, anyway. There's your man, David B. Get in contact, the Swedish phone number. Right, we'll get the Scottish phone number as well. There you go, and website. And they're off, they'll be back tomorrow. Cracking job. That is smashing news. Loads of water, plenty of it. So sleeve to bedrock and a bit further, drilled down to 70 meters, they found a crack, but they found water at 31 meters, 50 or 51 meters, um, and then a bit at 60 meters as well. So they're obviously all feeding in, and they felt like after that, there was plenty of volume of water um, to make that do, so they stopped at 70 meters. They can drill up to 300, 400 meters with that rig. Some people get it really early. My uncle's got one, I think that's at 20 meters and it's producing enough to run two irrigators just at 20 meters, which is a lot of water. Ours obviously 70 meters. You pay a bit more if you're going deeper, obviously, but the fact that we've hit it first time is pretty good and we've got plenty of it. Big thanks to Davey for coming last minute. I kind of phoned him a couple of weeks ago. The water was a bit of a stressful situation on the farm here. Putting on all, all these cows, we don't have good mains pressure. So that has solved the issue completely. They, they had a couple spare days to squeeze us in. Amazing. Also found out a couple of good stories about uh, my uncle, who's also called Crawford. Davey knows him from when he was a schoolboy. Anyway, cheers, Davey. If you're looking for boreholes, give him a try. His number, I'll put his number down below. He's worth a call if you're interested or you're considering different water options on your farm. Or He does geothermal stuff and he does various bits and bobs and he's all over.